in the news. Migration, young adults, teenagers make up the high number of persons being trafficked and prone to forced migration. A natural disaster, 1,500 people dead, 13,000 rendered homeless due to a recent devastating earthquake in Haiti. And Taliban rule, 2,000 Afghan refugees seek shelter in Uganda due to Taliban reign in Afghanistan. And in business, Nigeria's currency, the Naira, tends towards a unified exchange rate coming from the finance minister. Details coming up shortly. <music> This is TOS Television, your digital first pan African news network. I am Merciful Arjunam, and you're watching TOS News 360. Following the recent statistics by International Organization for Migration and the United Nations, the spate of human trafficking is on the rise, and Nigeria, according to the report, is one of the countries on the top chart. It is against this backdrop that Klein Foundation on Friday screened a documentary to keep Nigerians abreast with activities of human trafficking and illegal migration and also called for a collective effort at ending the rising scourge in the country. Speaking with newsmen at the documentary screening on human trafficking by the foundation in Nigeria's state of power on Friday, the foundation's acting executive director Ruth Olofing and the organization's media and communications officer Anna White Agbo opined that in order to curb the trend in the issue of human trafficking and forced migration in Nigeria, Parents must be sensitized not to commercialize the children, adding that the government should also provide an enabling environment, especially in the area of good education and skill acquisition, to equip the youth who in return will contribute to the socio-economic development of the country. The message is very clear. Let's prevent human trafficking, especially of women and girls. Our young ones are very prone, susceptible to human trafficking. We want them to be empowered with information. We want them to know who an enabler of human trafficking is when they come through families, through friends, their peer groups, and even through social media. We want them to have these skills and know that this person is coming to traffic me and be able to say, no, I don't want to be trafficked. And this documentary that you have screened today gives a lot of information about how traffickers are devising new means or the means that traffickers are using to get teenagers and young people out of the country now social media is one of you know those means i know that this group of people that you have screened this documentary today they are on social media social media is is a tool of the young person in this generation and they are easily poked you know on these platforms so we are telling them be aware if somebody is giving you an information that you're not sure about if somebody is saying something that you're not sure about then you should you should be able to say no you know i'm not going to do this me i think human trafficking is actually a key challenge in nigeria and i think uh personally the government really needs to do more to ensure that um, nigeria becomes a better place for people to live in because we need to tell ourselves the truth why are people being deceived? Of course, people are looking for greener pasture, you know, out there. So I believe that um, if our country, our beloved country, Nigeria, if it's a conducive, um, if, if, if Nigeria is given a conducive environment for people to thrive, you know, I think it will be very, very difficult for people to see or for people to be deceived to travel out there. Bandits have demanded the sum of 350 million naira ransom for the 15 student and four staff kidnapped from the College of Agriculture and Animal Science, Bakura, in Zamfara State, on Monday, August 16. This was revealed by the provost of the college, Alhaji Habibu Manisara, who said the bandits called him and told him that they needed 350 million naira for the 20 people currently in their captivity. Nigeria's 36 state governments have unanimously filed a suit against the federal government and the Supreme Court over alleged illegal diversion of over 1.8 trillion naira in recovered load. Also allegedly divided by the federal government, according to the plaintiff, are 450 billion naira worth of non-cash assets recovered proceeds of crime since 2015. The state government, whose legal team is led by a widely known senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, filed a suit with far-reaching implications on the handling of forfeited assets in Nigeria at the Supreme Court on June 16, 2021. 
And to news on the global scene, Haitian Civil Protection Office has said over 1,500 people have died from the 7.2 magnitude earthquake that struck Western Haiti on Saturday morning and left not less than 13,000 homes destroyed. Casualty tolls are expected to climb with predictions that there is another threat of tropical depression grace which may bring heavy rains leading to floods. Officials say more than 900 firefighters have been mobilized to tackle the wildfire in southern France. Thousands of people, including tourists in campsite, have been moved to safety as firefighters tackle a wildfire close to the French Riviera. Many were given only minutes to leave as hundreds of firefighters were deployed in the VAR region to the west of St. Tropez. This is your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS Television, and you are watching TOS News 360. Africa business and sports stories when we return. Do stay with us. Many thanks for staying. Uganda is to take in 2,000 refugees who have fled Afghanistan after Taliban militants took power on Sunday. According to the refugee minister Esther Anyakun, the deal was agreed following a request from the U.S. government. Uganda has a long history of welcoming refugees and is currently home to around 1.3 million people who have fled conflict or other disasters. And Mozambique state oil firm Petromox said a deactivated pipeline in northern part of the country has been vandalized, causing a fuel spillage. An investigation into the damage suffered by the pipeline located in the port of Nakala was underway, Petromok chairman Helder Chambesi said. Petromok was committed to cleaning up the spillage to prevent environmental damage. And firefighters in Morocco were fighting to contain forest fires in the mountainous Chefchaoun region in the north. Neighboring Tunisia and Algeria have been experiencing forest fires in the past week and made a heat wave sweeping across North African countries. The Algerian authorities on Monday said the wildfires that had been raging in the country for the past week were now under control. And now to the business scene, the Minister of Finance and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, said the latest policy by the Central Bank of Nigeria is pushing Onara towards a unified exchange rate to put an end to the multiple exchange rate that have bedeviled the country. The minister made this known in the interactive session on the medium-term expenditure framework organized by the House of Representatives Committee on Finance in Abuja. And now to the sports scene, where Kenya's president Uhuru Kenyatta has announced the cash reward for all participants in the Tokyo Olympics. The four gold medalists will each receive 1 million Kenyan shillings, while silver medalists will be given $6,800,000. The two bronze medalists will receive $4,500 while everyone who took part in the games and the technical team members will each receive $1,800. And that is TOS News 360 on your digital first Pan-African news network. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Stay with us and enjoy more programs on the network. I am Merciful. Ajinomo, many thanks for watching.